Let's try to recap everything we've learned so far. The Canadian government creates the phony laws necessary to give banks the power to create and manage money for the hard-working people of Canada, apparently for our benefit. However, the money that's created by these private banks is made and backed by nothing and attached with compounded interest. It's then lent to teachers, students, workers, and families who now have to pay back the banks what was made from nothing many times over with hard work. This creates a debt-based economy, since the majority of money that now circulates was created from a mortgage or some other kind of expensive loan. When an employer pays an employee, it's not actually money, but someone else's debt. In other words, we're trading debt, not money. Okay, so, so you wouldn't be for creating a debt-free money system? No. Would, would uh, a debt-free money system be good for the country or no? No. No, it would it, it, it's, it would I think we'd be better off without a public debt. What's wrong with everyone? Have they all lost their minds? In that sense, is, is a debt-free or debt-based money system, is that healthy for Canada, do you think? Healthy in the short term, because the alternative is that if you try to balance the books today, uh, you will in fact tip the scales very much in favor of a depression and deflation. Thank you. Well, luckily for Canadians, we have a way to fix these problems very easily. The reality is the Bank of Canada has, by legislation, the ability to make whatever money is needed to loan money to the Government of Canada without interest. The Bank of Canada, as it's stated on its official website, is ultimately owned by the people of Canada and has the power under the Canadian Constitution and the Bank of Canada Act to lend money to the government at no interest. And if there is interest to be charged, it would just come back to the people anyway, since we own the bank. I must admit, I'd rather pay interest to myself than, you know, in exactly. which case I'd probably give, cut myself a good deal, you know. Yeah, we never should have privatized our debt and turned it over to the private banks. We should have kept it in the hands of Bank of Canada, at least a major part of it, uh, because then we would have been paying interest back to ourselves. John, you can borrow from your savings account and I won't charge you any interest. Good. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, the Liberal government and the Conservative governments both uh, are too close to the banks. The banks wanted the business and uh, they managed to convince the government to privatize that uh, debt and of course now they, uh, they're the ones getting the, uh, the benefits. That's why you notice that they're still very profitable even though everyone else is suffering. Here's a rough example about how money in Canada should work. The Canadian government realizes it needs money to help make the country work. So it creates the Bank of Canada, whose sole task is to create and manage money for the people. The government then creates what's called a treasury bond, which is simply an IOU, a piece of paper promising to repay the amount of money that it borrows. This IOU is then given to the Bank of Canada, who then creates the money the same way private banks do, out of nothing. But since it's owned and operated by the people of the country, there's no reason to charge any interest. The government can now distribute the money which creates jobs. The people can now pull some of their money together and pay off the debt owed to the Bank of Canada, the People's Bank. After the first payment or so, since the Bank of Canada will have to pay its workers and fulfill its job to regulate money, our tax dollars will inevitably circle back into the country, so no new money is required to pay off the debt. And since there is no compounding interest, the debt will never grow, and we'll be able to pay it off very quickly. And once it's paid off, we'll be able to spend our extra hard work time and money on other things to help better the country. Oh, I don't I need it. to hear the lecture. I know all of this stuff. Okay, well, <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but I, I don't, just ask me your question. Okay, okay, well, 
and I'm not that knowledgeable on monetary policy, and the Green Party policies have not moved into the, have not yet adopted mm -hmm. the monetary policy that some of our members would like, which is one which would say we should get rid of the loans that we owe commercial banks and transfer that to the Bank of Canada and pay it off with a Bank of Canada loan and then cancel the debt. Hmm. Well, they both seem to know a lot about the monetary system to me. And yet last October in 2008, when the central topic in the federal election was about the economy, we made a decision to give priority to an issue dominating the news and people's concerns these days, the economy. So there will be an expanded debate on that. Not one single mention was made from any one of the parties about the monetary system, even from the ones who clearly knew about it. But if we go back to the 2006 federal debate, no one would shut up about the $100 million missing from the sponsorship scandal Paul Martin was involved with. But when $160 million goes missing every day, it's no big deal. Look, this is a mutual problem that every party should agree on fixing. And yet in the most important broadcasted debates prior to our elections, it's not even mentioned once. So coming back to the Bank of Canada, is there really any logical reason why we don't use it? What would make the government want to borrow money from uh, private banks instead of the Bank of Canada? It should deal with the Bank of Canada, period. Hmm. That's coming from a former finance minister and later prime minister. Let's compare that to Paul Martin, who shares the exact same titles. Does the, does the Prime Minister or President of either Canada or America have the ability to create debt-free money? Absolutely. Absolutely, okay. Because um, I, I, I was reading a quote Which by... Which kind of asks the question, why, why don't they? Why don't they? Right. Why don't they? Because it's inflationary. Because well, it drives it will drive inflation through the roof. How is that? Well, <laughs> here, are the gla here are my glasses. It's the only pair of glasses in the world, okay? And um, I, uh, I'm going to sell them for a dollar, right? And you have a dollar, and you don't have any money at all. Or no, you have ten dollars, and you don't have any money at all. These glasses are on sale for a dollar, okay? So you come to both come to see me, and you want to buy the glasses. I say, okay, fine. How, how much will you pay me? And you say, I can't pay any. I'm getting money. So I turn to you, and you say, well, fine. I'm the only buyer. I'll pay you a dollar, right? Let's say the glasses are on sale for a dollar today, and you both have ten dollars, right? So you come to me and you say, and you both desperately want my glasses. So you say to me, uh, I'll give you a dollar. And I say, well, okay, they were for sale for a dollar, but what will you give me? What are you going to say to me? Two. You're going to say two dollars. Two dollars. Sure. Okay. All of a sudden, these glasses, which were worth one dollar, are now worth two dollars. That's inflation. Mm -hmm. And that's inflation. The more money there is in supply, the danger there is there's going to be inflation. That's why everybody says what's happening now as a result of what's going on in the United States is that five years from now we're going to have massive inflation. So, so it, is, it is the amount of money in circulation that causes inflation, not who distributes the money, right? It's largely the amount of money in circulation. It, it, well, it, yeah, there are a lot of reasons, but it's, yes, that drives up the price. That drives up prices because more people can afford to buy something. Okay. I'm going to replay the last few seconds of that. Remember, he began saying that it was borrowing money from the Bank of Canada that would cause inflation. The more money there is in supply, the danger there is there's going to be inflation. That's why everybody says what's happening now as a result of what's going on in the United States is that five years from now we're going to have massive inflation. So, so it, is, it is the amount of money in circulation that causes inflation, not who distributes the money, right? It's largely the amount of money in circulation. It, it, well, it, yeah, there are a lot of reasons, but it's, yes, that drives up the price. That drives up prices because more people can afford to buy something. I think what he's trying to say is now that he's allowed the private banks to make up this magical money that keeps growing in their favor, the government shouldn't borrow money from the Bank of Canada since they would have to create new numbers that don't already exist. But if the Bank of Canada had just been doing its job from the start, it wouldn't make a difference anyway. Do you see how absurd it is to say that the Bank of Canada causes inflation? 
Besides, since 95% of money is created by private banks, they're the cause of 95% of inflation. Because of the decisions made by prime ministers like Paul Martin, this is how money in Canada sadly works. <laughs>